description as we have so much good content today. But suffice to say, I am very excited. And with that, I hope you will all join me for a short land acknowledgement that I have prepared. Uh, so with that, I am going to jump into it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gemma. I really appreciate that. So as we meet, I must consider that I'm present on land that is the traditional home of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the neutral peoples. As an indigenous person, I can attest that we have a deep and appreciable historical connection to this place. This holds true for many folks tuning in from the Halton region and across what we tur call Turtle Island, an area rich in history and modern tradition, from the Anawaran, the Anishinaabe, to the Haudenosaunee, and the Métis, and indeed many more peoples. From the water we drink, to the food we eat, to the air we breathe, Indigenous peoples have made the land what it is, shaping and strengthening our communities. As we join today on these treaty territories, it is our honor and duty to respect the seven teachings, the four directions, the waters, land, flora, fauna, and those who walked before us. I humbly encourage everyone here to buy Indigenous where possible, advocate as an ally without overspeaking, and to commit to being a lifelong learner. Thank you all so much for joining us. Really quickly, before I get into a recap of the series, kind of encapsulating what we've been up to and filling everybody in on some of the finer details, does anybody have any questions or any comments that they'd like to make before we continue? Excellent. I just wanted to make sure that it kind of wasn't just me talking up here with no opportunity uh, for people to jump in. So with that, we'll get into a recap of the series. So what's this program all about? Essentially, its purpose is to help young leaders understand how to organize and equip them with the tools and resources that they need for successful projects, teams, and organizations in collaboration with community partners like yourselves, and of course, many of our team members here. The ideal was to empower, and I believe we've succeeded in this, a group of young activists, many of you listening here today, to take on a leadership role in our upcoming April program and with the many esteemed organizations of our community partners. If I went into all of the wonderful work that you guys were doing, I'd be here all day. And uh, right now we really wanna focus on what our young leaders have been up to. So now for a bit of background context. This is project year three and the final year for our OTF funding. A major project for us was developing tangible opportunities for sustainability, specifically in sustaining the good work that we've been doing at the Halton Youth Initiative and continuing to build meaningful intergenerational relationships. And the ideal outcome was sharing knowledge on youth organizing movements, gathering feedback on what young leaders feel they need to have how to run successful community projects and begin developing these tools and resources in collaboration with yourselves as we've been doing for the past six or so weeks to get these tools ready and perhaps share with the public. We had several expert guests come on to support us, uh, learning about topics such as building the case, the importance of research and data, how communities grow, getting others involved, and solidifying our message and really learning how to tell a story and succeed by sharing. We were joined by Elizabeth Wells, PhD, Nabil Rahman, a community development specialist at the town of Oakville, Beth Williams, communications and marketing manager at OKN, and Pat Howell Blackmore, a community building and capacity champion at PHB Spark Consulting. Now, before we jump into it, I have just a few observations that I want to make, a few quick things that didn't really fit in with the rest of the introduction, but I think are worth mentioning. So one of the first things that I noticed was that our community leaders, many of you here today, are really having that capacity to lead. I've noticed that you guys are really interested in getting our young leaders engaged with what you're doing and enabling us to kind of have that impact. And likewise, I've noticed over the course of my year or so with the Halton Youth Initiative, and also this past six or so weeks even for some newer folks, our young leaders, many of whom are present in this call, big shout out to all of you, becoming more confident with your newfound skills, developing really into professionals and advocates. And I really think this showcases the importance of these spaces and intergenerational learning. Uh, from Lily to me back in the Stone Age when I was with the Volunteer Action Center in Kitchener, uh, and now from all of us here to our wonderful team of young leaders. It has been great to see, but that's enough of me talking with all of that out of the way. Thank you for standing by. Let's get into what we're all really here for, the presentations from our team. So they are here in the order of appearance. So if the Art House team is ready, you may feel free to jump into it. But before we do that, if there are any quick opening comments that anybody just wants to throw in, uh, please feel free to do that now. 
Awesome, just wanna make sure that everybody is kind of feeling included and like they have some space to jump in. So with that, thank you so much Art House for standing by. You two can feel free to jump into it. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley and this is my partner, Angela. Hey. For our deep dive project, we've been working with Tracy and Taylor from Art House. Art House provides accessible, safe and free programming with strong role model relationships. In addition to their foundation of arts related programs that support the creativity and positive well being of youth, their work includes homework help, cooking, gardening, environmental education, and maybe just a great conversation. The proposed area of focus was a possible campaign to engage youth more readily and get opportunities out to them without going through their parents. Me and Angela worked hard to come up with a solution and decided to propose an Art House Youth Instagram account. Here's our presentation. The idea. Instagram is a social media platform that allows photo and video sharing with your friends on your phone. Art House, Art House youth can follow the account. We believe that to engage more youth and get opportunities out to them without going through their parents, a youth Instagram page for the Art House would be most effective. So for the general setup of the account, we thought that the username could be Art House Youth, nice and general and direct in it tells the youth what the account is about. And then um, password and access, the Art House has a social media team that would set up the account and passwords, the staff would run the account, um, and we would help with any guidance that they would need. And then for the bio, we wanted to keep it consistent with the main Art House account. Um, so it would be Art House Youth, nonprofit organization. Art House is a free charity that provides free art programs for youth with little or no access to the arts just telling them what it's about, um, but keeping consistent again with the main account. And then for the logo, we created this. We took the, um, the Art House logo and we added some paint splatters to the back to make it pop. And then we added youth in um, a neon little light so that um, it would stand out that it's different from the main account. So something that's really important in making an account is how you're gonna promote it and who you're gonna follow. So for following, we thought that it would be great to follow community partners like the Halton Youth Initiative. Also, it would be great to follow youth back as youth tend to unfollow those who don't follow them back. And a way to promote this account would be on the main Art House account, as well as their website and their private Facebook groups. For posting, we thought it would be good to post at least once a week or whenever an event is coming up. It's great to connect with and post about other organizations that hold events for youth as well, like within Halton, so that they can get involved. Um, but we want to make a point not to post too much so that like we don't overcrowd people's pages, but just enough to stay like relevant and inform them about new things. Um, so for our example posts, um, we thought that we could do two, like a slide post. So the first one would be like a welcome um, to encourage them to follow and stick around. So that's what it would say, follow us and stick around for youth focused art and community opportunities. And the second slide would be to educate followers on what type of organization the Art House actually is and the goal that it, that it has. So it would say Art House Halton. Art House is a charitable organization that provides free art programs for children and youth living in the region of Halton, who otherwise may not have access to arts programming. So um, we are so thankful to have been given the opportunity to work on this project and enhance and learn our new, new management organizational and collaborative skills on this journey with Art House. Um, after the deep dive youth opportunity, Ashley and I will continue to work with Art House in providing posts for future events or giving advice regarding the youth Instagram account. We will remain in touch to continue building our community project that we have been so fortunate to be a part of. So thank you. That was absolutely amazing, Lily. Are we taking any questions? Absolutely. We can take questions and then um, end off their segment with some thoughts from the Art House team, like Taylor and uh, Tracy team. Uh, 
I thought that was really fantastic. Sorry, I'm Gemma. I work with Taylor and Tracy. Tracy can't be on tonight, but um, that was really awesome. I love the, the youth take on what we currently have for a regular page. So thank you very much. It's, it's kind of a cool like uh, tie dye look to it. Yeah, thank you, ladies. It's been awesome working with you guys. So it was cool. We haven't, we didn't get to see both those posts last week. So it's cool to see both of them side by side. So it's been awesome. Thank you so much, Gemma and Taylor, for your feedback, your support, and for being here on this uh, occasion. Absolutely wonderful graphics, and I really like the attention to detail in terms of advice that you're giving for social media. For example, uh, young people often unfollow them if they aren't followed back. Often goes overlooked, but is super important. Great work. And with that, if there are no further questions, I believe we are ready to jump into the Canadian Gaptor Association's presentation. So whenever y'all are ready to jump into it, please feel free to. Okay, so we worked with the Canadian Gap Year Association, which is the registered- Is anybody um, else hearing a little bit of feedback with uh, the microphone? Oh, is there? Yeah. Let me take my headphones out, that might be less. Thank you so much. That, that sounds now? a lot better. That sounds a lot better. It's perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, so back to what I was saying, um, we worked with the Canadian Gap Year Association, which is a registered nonprofit organization um, with a mission to support young people who are looking to take a gap year and explore and experience the real world um, according to their talents, goals, and interests. So our project here is really to gather student per perspectives on gap year, especially how their perspective may change under the current pandemic. And so we are looking for people to interview over Zoom. And we also have some questions to, to consider during the interview. For example, what are challenges or barriers about taking a gap year? Like what would people normally think about? and how, as I mentioned, how has COVID affected their perspectives and also what would help them to feel more comfortable taking a gap year or to help them overcome the challenges. Yeah, Caroline. Um, so we haven't started our interviews yet, but we're working to get people right now. And we're, we're, we're trying to interview about 10 people and get their perspectives. And once we um, complete all those interviews, me and Melissa are going to come together and kind of create a general summary of all the ideas that we've heard and create into one document and just gather um, data so we can help the organization find ways to reach to p p youth and get their, like how to actually draw them into taking a gap year. So we do have a list of interview questions already generated. Um, yeah, and as Caroline mentioned, we are now waiting for our participants to sign up so that we can interview them. And what we really want to get out of those interviews are um, not only student perspectives, but the um, most like really important quotes from our participants, like maybe a common word that may, they mentioned that uh, may help the organization to target their future um, audiences and yeah, to impact more people. And we also want our participants to come from um, a variety of um, backgrounds and also they have a variety of perspectives on gap year. So to ensure the diversity, uh, we also set up a Google form to uh, like a sign up Google form so that we also get to know a little bit about them. And we are making sure that um, our participants are not overlapping too much. And I think that's about it. Any questions? That was excellent. I like how kind of you talk about wanting to be inclusive and that you're making sure all groups are kind of represented uh, equally. That way you don't skew your data. Clearly there is a lot of thought that you have put into this. And uh, as a person of Haudenosaunee tra uh, tradition, 
y'all did a great job of kind of orating uh, your experiences with this project. Thank you so much, Melissa and Caroline. Are there any questions or comments from uh, the crowd? I just wanted to say a huge thank you um, to these two ladies who have just shown up in such an amazing way to support the Canadian Gap Year Association um, and really taken the time and energy to operationalize um, and to really put together a really succinct way for me to get access to this information. And I'm just so grateful um, for all the work that they're doing and their insight and their expertise um, and their ability to tap into their peer networks and to to listen um, and then to consolidate that information because I think there are so many nuances in language and um, really understanding what resonates with people will really help us as an organization um, and I'm so grateful for their insight expertise and and time. That was very well put. Thank you so much for sharing Michelle and shout out to you again Melissa and Caroline and of course Michelle for being around to support. Uh, Lily, do I see your hand up there? Yeah, so I just wanted to also echo, thank you, Caroline and Melissa for your great work and your continued work with the Canadian Gap Year. Loving that that's gonna um, continue on. I will say we've already had two HYI students who have stepped forward to say that they would like to be interviewed. Um, so really looking forward to seeing um, how that all plays out. We'll have um, some more to share on social media. So great work and thank you, Michelle. With that, I think we might be ready to jump into, oh, I see a question from Dia here. Does it have to be high school? Because I'm in grade eight, so does it have to be a high school student? Um, I guess majority would be high school students, like grade uh, 10, 11, 12. But I think we can also get some you know, perspective from um, younger students as well. So I think that's fine. Caroline? OK. I agree. Thank you so much for that question, Dia. And thank you so much, Melissa and Caroline, for providing some insight there. With that, if there are no further comments, I think we're ready to jump into our Halton Youth Initiative team. So feel free to take it away whenever you're ready. Okay, hi. Um, sorry, I'll just share my screen very quickly. Um, Okay. Sorry about that. I have not really used Zoom before. All good. Um, I have a bit, but not for sharing screen very often. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm hoping you can do this. I sure can, Tandy. Perfect. Looks excellent. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tanvi. I am one of the team members for the deep dive for the HYI, and my partner is Mel. Hi. So we've made a slideshow to show, uh, present our ideas and what we've worked on for the past four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, really. <laughs> so our mission and like for the HYI itself currently and the purpose of our project is what we'll be discussing first. And um, the mission that we have just chosen to talk about today is basically what we feel or what we see through our work. And that's providing a platform for stakeholders across youth, um, Halton, whether that be youth or adults, to continue working and impacting their communities in positive ways. And the reason we've uh, been working on this project for multiple weeks is because the funding for the HYI is ending in October 2021, 20, which is um, honestly quite sad because I've loved working here. But our solution to continue the mission is by having a youth-led team, and that uh, we're calling this the HYI Sustainability Team. And our project was to outline the team structure, essentially, and reasons for why the HYI should even continue. So, um, yeah, 
know if we'll speak about this. Okay, so why the HOI should continue. The Halton Youth Initiative provides youth with developmental assets such as empowerment, support, constructive use of time, positive values, boundaries, expectations, positive identity, and many more things. These developmental assets allow for youth improvement and advocacy. Moreover, the HYI is a source of inspiration and spark to keep our community active on issues that affect us. Like the result of a 2017 HSDB and HCDSB survey that conveyed the significant amount of students that felt disconnected from certain developmental assets. The decrease in statistics, such as just 22% of students answering as caring was important to them, or the decline in values with the transition from elementary to high school, positive peer influence, negative 13%, family support, negative 11%, positive views on the future, negative 10%, etc. cetera. And because of the survey conducted by HRII, we are able to assess and point out where there are overlapping issues that need to be solved and talked about within the youth and in our community. The Halton Youth Initiative also invites and brings together the, and, strength, and strengthens the relationship complex with youth and adults to consolidate everyone as a community and let every voice be heard, whether through surveys, personal stories, quotes, and or data. Now we have some quotes that we've collected from youth stakeholders and our current adult allies um, that have, that kind of support what we're talking about. So yeah, um, so Lindsay Sinclair said that empowering youth is so important, not only because it provides them with valuable experience and inspiration for their future, but also because youth have a tremendous perspective to offer on, to the community. Youth are creative and innovative and can approach issues in a new, interesting way. So they are incredibly valuable to the various initiatives our community are striving to achieve. And then Angela says, I think having such a specific organized system for youth engagement is, me is very meaningful and really allows the ideas the youth have to come to life and be, uh, and to be put into action quickly. Yeah. And step on Siki, I really don't know how to pronounce the name, I'm sorry. Um, from personal experience, HYI has provided me with many volunteer hours. And although I have more than 40, I still chose to continue with HYI because I enjoy it so much. I'm sure I'm not the only student out there. The HYI has provided me with knowledge on how to create different projects, how to work better with people, especially through an online meeting, meeting, how to present in front of a large audience. It has allowed for me to stay connected within my community and allow to spread, spread my knowledge about my community. So we had a lot of quotes come in and thank you everybody to send, um, for sending that, but those were just some that we picked up. And now in terms of the proposed structure for our HY sustainability team, um, this is kind of like a very simplified timeline version um, from what I originally wrote. And our first step would be to kind of reorient ourselves and really discuss where do we want to go with the HYI um, in the future now that this is youth led and we need to kind of figure things out on our own, I guess. Um, so the original plan is to or the tentative plan is to have a youth from each council be chosen by Siobhan and Lily. And these people will be known as our community representatives and they will basically be the, um, like the name mentions, the representatives from their community and their teams. Then we'll open up applications to HYI youth. And uh, for now they're called support leads. And these roles would include treasurer, secretary, um, all these roles that really play a critical part in maintaining the HY sustainability team past the youth. Then we'll, we're hoping to form new teams and these teams are to meet weekly to achieve the goals we've set up previously. And we're hoping that in order to promote cross communication between teams, we have a short monthly meeting um, where each team debriefs, debriefs about what they're, uh, what they're working on, as well as just provide a network opportunity because from the Google form that we've sent out to collect data from current HYI volunteers, that has been something that's been missing 
um, currently, and we're hoping that we can really bring that back up um, and just communicate with everyone. And then each June, we're hoping that applications can open up for the next year's community representatives and support leads and July and August act as just transition periods. Um, and yeah, so it just goes on as a cycle. And currently we also need a platform in order to um, gauge or in order to continue receiving support from our adult allies. And these adult allies play a vital, vital part in the HYI. They provide us with opportunities. They give us support and in turn we provide them with support too. And so we will also have adult allies, we're just calling them community partners. And the relationship that we're hoping to foster between the youth and community partners will be mutual in terms of benefits. Um, because the impact on the youth from community partners is that really the, if you're familiar with the Search Institute's developmental relationship frameworks, um, these are like the five main points. Uh, you're forming connections between youth and adults, and these are maintained uh, even past the HYI. You're providing opportunities to youth to help them try something new. You're giving them support. You're helping them take the lead, and you're giving them the opportunity to do all of this. And that's, that's awesome. Like, that's amazing. But then we also provide you with a valuable perspective to achieve your goals. Um, so one quote that I'd like to point out that we received was, my time spent with the youth has helped me feel a sense of accomplishment in giving back to the community, but I also feel that I've learned so much from the youth. Their insights and questions remind me of why I am inspired by my chosen field of work and gives me a sense of hope that the future will be good with the youth of tomorrow leading the future. Um, so yeah. And now we'll talk about why we feel youth volunteers are also important and why we are campaigning to have more join our team in the near future. Or actually, no, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so why youth volunteer is important because you meet people with similar interests coordinating to the specific place you're volunteering at. You make friends within your community and you're able to connect and hear new stories and experiences of people, i.e. from different countries, races, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic standing, etc. Networking is also really important. While volunteering, you meet specific adults, coordinators, and peers that know someone that can benefit you um, with work experience or secondary or post-secondary school guidance or advice, and many more things. Creating a network of people that you know can be very beneficial to you and your volunteer work can provide you with a new option because you meet countless people from talking and learning. Um, also, jobs in Canada and around the world require volunteer. This is because they want loyal employees that know that they will care about their community and about people. And last, you get to give back to, to your community. Your community raised you and has given you countless opportunities and a place to grow and learn. And now you're old enough to be the one that cares for your community and gives back the deed. You can invest time and effort and allow your community your community to prosper. So to conclude, uh, the HYI specifically promotes the mental, social, and physical well-being of our community members to help facilitate a strong, healthy, and progressive community. Um, and volunteering uh, just generally creates a platform to give back to the community that has given so much to us. And the HYI hopes to continue their impact in the community by providing youth and adults a platform to share their voice and share their perspectives in order to benefit the community and the world in a positive way. Thank you. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Canvi and No, for putting together this presentation, encapsulating what is a very clear amount of care effort and time put into the future of the Halton Youth Initiative. I especially love the youth-led focus. Clearly, there are many good things to come from this in the future. Before we move on to our next group, I'd like to open the floor up for any thoughts, comments, or questions. I see your hand up there, Siobhan. Jump into it. Hi, everyone. Um, 
Yeah, I just like to say I'm really impressed, Tanvi Anof, with your presentation. It's been a real pleasure um, meeting with you, chatting with you, but you really um, took up the torch and did all this. And I really love how you incorporated the data. I feel like there's, oh, do you hear an echo there? <laughs> Sorry, but you built you built the case as to why um, HRI should continue. I'm really looking forward to working with you guys. So you're Thank hired. You so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for that feedback, Siobhan. That is really sweet and also really helpful. Uh, really quickly, although I must agree these sunglasses look cool, they are mainly to protect the, uh, my eyes uh, from the sunlight right now. They are a bit sensitive to that kind of thing. So thank you all so much for sticking with us. And thank you so much for joining us tonight and for all of our teams presenting. With that, would our team representing the town of Halton Hills like to jump in if there aren't any further thoughts or comments? Yeah, sure. Let me just get the screen share. Show. Sounds good. All right, are you guys seeing it or? I am. Right now I can kind of see like the Google slide view with like the tabs and kind of things like that. Okay, hold on, let me just, uh, get this. okay, what Looks about now? Perfect. Looks absolutely perfect. Okay, all right. So uh, me and Zainab, we work with the Halton, Hill, Halton Hills U Recreation Department, that's specifically the youth centers they have over there for our project and this presentation is about the process and development of the, the new youth center programs that we've created. So in the beginning of the project, which was we all did roughly the same thing, when we met, when we made contact with Jenna Ancona, who's the community partner for the Halton Hills Recreation Department, we shared some emails and then we had the that one meeting, I think it was sometime in late February where we all like talked and brainstormed. And we learned what the department wanted from the project, which was set up in a separate document that was already ready. And then we threw around a bunch of ideas in that brainstorm meeting, formulated a large document to organize like what we want to do, why we want to do it and how we would do it. And then we sort of came to a complete conclusion of what we definitively wanted to do with whatever we were going to do. And what we wanted to do, what, oh, <laughs> So what was wanted by the recreation department was a project or a program that would expand awareness of the youth centers, emphasize the drop in opportunities that they run over there and empower the youth voice in the community to help improve the youth centers. So it was meant to be something easily accessible, targeted at youth from 12 to 24 and oriented around the youth voice, obviously. So we went back and forth between the drop in and accessibility aspect because we wanted something sort of more long-term and involved because there are like pros and cons to both of those things where you could have the higher, like the people more comfortable with just having a drop-in, low commitment opportunity to just give their opinion, get help us for a bit and then leave or the long-term and involved type of program like what we're doing here that sort of gives a uh, more long-term, better made solutions. And then we came to a decision. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Zainab. So as Husni said before, we want to kind of empower the youth of Halton Hills so that they can feel like they have a voice and that they can make a positive uh, impact and difference within their community. So we've been kind of working on creating two different programs where youth can come together to discuss some things regarding their community. So the first program that we have here is the Youth Center of Feedback Meetings. Essentially, youth will be kind of meeting on a weekly basis to discuss feedback that they receive from the community. These meetings will be held both in person and virtually. So youth leaders and volunteers will be hosting an Instagram Live from the Halton Hills Youth Centers um, that they're based in. Um, and volunteers will discuss feedback that they receive from community members through comments in th from the Instagram Live um, and through other surveys and other feedback forms. Um, and they'll be looking for ways to incorporate the feedback into future youth targeted programs and services. So our targeted uh, 
demographic for this opportunity is youth from age 12 to 24. Um, and all our volunteers will be given volunteer hours for their meaningful participation. And these meetings will be run uh, by youth center staff as well as youth leaders and volunteers. So our second program, no problem, Husty. So our second program, these are monthly meetings. Um, and essentially, both these programs will work in tandem to incorporate the feedback received from Halton Hills community members into programs and services available in youth centers. These will be monthly meetings. Um, and I guess the best way to put this is that the first program is the process of receiving feedback. Um, and this program is kind of the result where volunteers will be creating programs and services um, out of the feedback that they receive. So during our planning phase, we kind of realizes, realized that we need to get the word out, engage the youth interest in these volunteer opportunities and programs. So we created a survey to collect the information about what the youth wanted to see in these programs and shared it around in a few different ways. So we uh, created posters and we've placed them throughout the Acton and Georgetown, Georgetown Youth Centers and Halton Hills. We also posted the survey on the Halton Hills Youth Instagram account, and we also created a Google form. Um, and we also posted on social media to spread the word about our programs. We've also been working on a volunteer Halton announcement to advertise these opportunities. Um, and lastly, we reached out to high schools in Halton Hills um, and shared the details of these opportunities with them, along with our poster and the link to the survey. So first of all, we have the most basic way to sort of get the word out, which are some posters that we designed and we whipped up. So they had basic information. And because there were it was two different programs, both with a good bit of details, we opted to sort of have a uh, contact us to find out more. We shared them, as we said, we printed them out. We put them in the youth centers. We shared them on social media as pictures and digital announcements with schools and uh, whoever we work with to send out digital announcements. And as you can see, we have three of the designs we made here, which all roughly communicate the same message with slightly different designs. So along with a Google form, we decided to transform the questions in our survey to interactive Instagram stories to better reach our target audience. Uh, we also posted our poster on the Halton Hills Youth Instagram account, as I said before, to spread the word about these exciting new opportunities. And then the final one was we made announcements to schools in the area with the relevant uh, age demographic. So we made contact with those schools. We sent them some emails. We told them about our program, what we wanted to do, why we were going to do it. And then we gave them this pre-made announcement we, we whipped up with sort of some text, a few links, some information so that they could send it to children, to students who would be interested, sort of like a straight line to who we want in our program. They also made uh, announcements over the intercom about it too, instead of and not, not just like a Google Classroom or a D2L announcement. All right, so these are the results from our Instagram survey. So across all the stories, we had, had an average response of like 95 people. So the first question here is, are you interested in volunteering at Halton Hills Youth Centers? And about 88% of the people who responded said they are. Um, and to understand the age range that is most interested in our program, we also asked them that, you know, which class are they currently in? And as you can see from this pie chart over here, um, people in grade 10 were uh, the, responded most to this survey. I mean, also because Halton Hills has two different youth centers, just to understand, you know, perhaps where the most of the volunteers will be coming from, we also asked the audience which youth center they prefer or they attend more often. And here are a few other of the results we had from the Instagram survey. So since what we wanted to do was you who were interested in sort of having a voice and making change and being part of the process, we asked uh, how interested they were in having a voice and being able to make change in the world around them. And the average answer was uh, not very interested, but interested at least, which is good because we know that we are fishing in the right demographic and they're aware. Uh, we also asked interest in the specific programs. So in the 
So for the feedback meetings, we had a good bit of people who uh, roughly 36% who were very interested and 44% who were kind of interested, which is a pretty good, uh, pretty good ratio. And then we asked about how interested people were in the peer leadership program. And for that, we got a far higher amount of very interested, which was 41%, which is great because that's who we want. All right, so where are we now? So we've sent out the advertising to all of our sources. We have finalized the details for the program as well as we've kind of established this volunteer, uh, volunteer criteria for the leaders that we're looking for. Um, and we've also kind of collected all the data from our social media promotional campaigns. So some of the next steps that we have are kind of, you know, to get the volunteer signups going to organize in-person meetings, you know, with volunteer participation and discussions going on as well. And then lastly, creating and implementing new programs and services for youth in um, the Halton Hills Youth Centers. Yep, so that's it. Yeah, thank you for your time and attention. You, we hope you enjoyed the presentation and are excited at the prospect of the program that we've been making. Husni and Zainab, thank you so much. That was excellent. I can tell that you put a lot of time and effort into your data collection, making sure that you're getting all of the right statistics so that you can create the best possible product. And as people have noted in the chat, super creative use of the Instagram polls and Instagram analytics there to get the different age demographics and to kind of reach people where we are. That's an absolutely stellar job and actually going to award five bonus points just for that ingenuity alone. That's a great modern solution to a modern problem of collecting data in a post-COVID age. Uh, with that, are there any questions or comments? I, well, I'm raising my hand with my camera on, but <laughs> I, I, just, I just wanted to say thank you to both of you because literally from the beginning, it was just you know an idea we were chatting about and the two of you rolled with it and came up with some really creative solutions to obtain that feedback and direction to really launching this program. So I just really want to say thank you. Your hard work it was noted and appreciated and well done. Very innovative. So thank you. Thank you so much for that feedback, Jennifer. I'm just going to wait a little bit, a couple of seconds for anybody else who wants to jump in. And while I do that, perhaps the YMCA of Oakville team, last but most certainly not least, can jump into it whenever they're ready. Um, I just wanted to ask you, are you able to see my screen? Great question. And I can see the screen right now. It looks good. Okay. Um, let me. Okay. Ready. All right. Hello. Um, my name is Kat. And my name is Dia. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to present to you the YMC of Oakville. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and put them in the link that Dia will put in the chat box right now. And without further ado, let's get started. So we've all been affected by the novel coronavirus pandemic that unraveled a year ago. Many community organizations have switched to virtual platforms, and this has affected both the organization and the citizens. One is one of those organizations too. It's a charity that offers free assistance to those in need, ensuring that their programs and services are open to all. It played a crucial role in improving the quality of health and life, especially during the pandemic. The money will come from two parts. parts from a revenue generating stream and from a non-revenue generating stream. Prior to COVID-19, several families had difficulties affording all monthly payments. So a portion of the YMCA's money would go to those people. 25% of the membership would receive some form of financial assistance. 1,700 people monthly would receive some form of financial subsidies. 50-50 male and female, as well as 50-50 adults, children and student memberships. Several examples of financial assistance can include temporary assistance for the first 12 months and then transition to a full membership or even during uh, maternity leave. Now, as mentioned earlier, COVID-19 has impacted communities worldwide, including the YMCA. If families couldn't afford the monthly payments prior to the pandemic, it has become much more of a challenge to do so during. 
With the YMCA closed, no subsidies have been provided. Not much data has been collected since YMCA is opening in September, so they haven't been really able to tell if families stopped coming back because they couldn't or if they chose not to come back. If over time the numbers go up back up to 1,700, 2,500, or even stay at 1,000, it'll tell us something. Some of YMCA's money went to support communities, such as free programs. However, with no money coming in, they could no longer offer them for free. Several programs even had to be closed due to the layoff of staff, as well as the fact that the buildings weren't equipped with COVID safety measures. In addition to that, the money that they uh, could have been saving up had to go to those COVID safety measures, such as touchless water taps and new ventilation systems. In 2019, 32,014 people participated in the community-based programs. Now, in 2020, that number dropped by 90% down to 350 people. A percentage of the revenue goes to support the community and those that can't afford. These people can include youth age six and older, potential newcomers, newcomers, struggling youth such as with mental health, finances, identity, or just general youth that is not on track to graduate as well as older adults. Many people have been impacted financially by COVID-19. It was already difficult before the pandemic and during it, they became isolated even more. These people are further at risk, yet the disparity has increased. The YMCA relies heavily on grants and fundings to continue to deliver programs at no cost. And with the lack of income, it has been a struggle to keep program programs afloat. Many YMCA branches have been closed, limiting the availability of programs, limiting staff and volunteers. As mentioned earlier, the need for COVID safety measures has redirected the money towards that. Increasing the monthly fee is not a solution as people can't afford for it to be more expensive. This is a lasting effect that could last up for up to three years. Children and youth are especially going through a lot during the pandemic. Teresa Rinaldi from the YMCA of Oakville explained that this would have an overall big impact on children and youth mental health. The lockdown has cut down on social life, such as talking with friends, meeting children their age and being a team player, of many including children and youth who go to school and or participate in extracurricular activities like camps, clubs, or teams. The closure of summer camps and daycares at the YMCA have affected over seven, seven, 7,000 kids and youth. Parents have found it hard to look after their kids without the daycare and camp centers along with their work. Oh, dear, you're muted. Oh, sorry. On the right of the slide, you can see the annual report of the community impact that the YMCA was able to provide before the pandemic started, which was in 2019. As you can see, in total, more than 3,214 people participated in these community initiatives. A few of the programs that were included are Halt and Sport Leadership, Newcomer, Newcomer Recreation, Newcomer Youth Leadership Development, Community Basketball Programs, and so on. As you can see, these are the ways that YMCA helps society. So they will provide secure daycare facilities for children so that parents can work. They provide financial support to families. They provide facilities for community recreational activities, child and youth programs like camp. They will take on global initiatives. They will provide employment services as well as provide classes for a wide variety of skills. If you can, please try to donate on the website that Kat will be po um, putting in the chat right now, and which you can see on the slide or in the Zoom chat. And then the donation that you give will be greatly appreciated and will help the many people who need assistance now. So I think Kat has put that in the chat right now. Um, Okay, one of the action items we decided to do was to create an Instagram post on the HYI Instagram accounts that would raise awareness um, about the YMCA. Um, we posted this yesterday and we also decided to create a video tutorial showing how you can donate um, to the YMCA of Oakville.
see a vocal.org page and click Donate Now. This will bring you to the donation page. Scroll down and select the amount you would like to donate, or you can insert your own amount that you prefer. Select if you would like to donate now or donate monthly. Then scroll to the donor tax receipt information. Here you will insert your personal information such as email, your donor type, your first and last name, and your address. Once you scroll further, you will reach the payment information section. Then in addition to all of that, you can insert your dedication information if you would like to remain anonymous, as well as answer this question. Once you have filled out all of the necessary sections, now you know how easy it is to make a donation. To make it um, so thank you um, from both of us. And does anyone have any questions? Ia and Kat, that was absolutely amazing. I like your innovative video tutorial and I like how you included the opportunity to ask questions built into the Google slideshow uh, like that. I've never quite seen it that way. So bonus five points for ingenuity there. Uh, I really like all of the content, of course, that you put together. You clearly put a lot of thought and care into this, uh, although that could be said for all of the projects here. Thank you both so much again, Kat and Dia for putting this together and with that, uh, feel free to jump in either through chat or with any questions that you have on the Google Drive form itself or just with audio. If I could jump in, this is Teresa from the YMCA Vocal. Um, thank you so much, um, Deanne Kat, for putting together a great presentation. It was, um, it, you know, looking at all the presentations today, everyone did an amazing job and such creative ideas. And with Kat and Dia, it was more of a, a research project in terms of, you know, COVID-19 has certainly put um, pressure on charities. And, you know, like many charities, charities are struggling. So, um, you know, how do we provide support? How do we look at, um, you know, and that support could be monetary, could be through volunteerism. There could be a number of ways to support charity. So you pulled a lot of information and uh, like many charities, you know, the YMCA of Oakville is not immune to um, financial hardship. Um, several YMCA's, we've just, um, another YMCA has closed in Niagara mm -hmm. and um, a couple more will be announced this week. So, you know, so, it's great. Um, thank you so much for pulling this information together and raising awareness about, you know, how COVID has impacted charities. Thank you so much for that feedback, Teresa. So pretty soon, oh, do I see a hand up there, Lily? Yeah, I just wanted to um, chime in and, and let everybody know that uh, they posted um, uh, about 24 hours ago and 250 people have been reached by that post. Um, there were several profile visits directly to the YMCA um, and, uh, and of course a number of likes. So just even in that one day, that extra attention and awareness has been brought to the YMCA. So um, congratulations Dia and Kat and thank you for all your hard work on that. Thank you. Thank you. That is amazing. And I could not have said that better myself. So if there aren't any further comments, we will get into the wrap up for today. And of course, as soon as I take the sunglasses off, the clouds decide that it's time for them to go away. So really quickly, everybody here has some phenomenal capabilities. And for our young people, especially, there is tremendous potential there. If I went into every bit of potential that I saw, we'd be here until 5 a.m. next Friday. So I'd like to thank you, Kat. I'd like to thank you, Dia. I'd like to thank you, Jennifer, Siobhan. I'd like to thank you, Tanvi. I'd like to thank you, Michelle, Teresa, Gemma, Pat, Melissa, Taylor, Husni, Ashley, Caroline, Angela, Zainab, and Nope. And of course, you, Lily. Thank you so much, all of you, for making this possible. Thank you for giving the opportunity to teach, learn, and grow with everybody here and to make this a solid part 
a fond memory that I'll always look back to of my professional career. And I see you there, Lily, with the UNICEF team. My apologies. Oh, no problem. I didn't want to interrupt uh, the, the great wrap up chat. Um, but really quickly, um, I know that um, six of our deep dive students couldn't be here today because I didn't want to over tap. Um, but just to give a quick little summary about what that team has been up to. Um, so UNICEF and the Canadian Index of Wellbeing, along with the Ontario Trillium Foundation, have chosen Halton Region, Waterloo Region, Ottawa, and Digby, Nova Scotia to be the pilot communities for a child and youth well-being survey. Um, we are the pilot communities. We will be helping create background tools and resources and be the guinea pigs for a survey that will eventually go across Canada. So those students have been hard at work providing insight and information on how to get the survey out there. They facilitated our youth labs and most recently um, filmed a, a video that will be going in our regional communications kit that will go out to all of our community partners. Um, they have some other tasks too that they'll be working on throughout the month of April so that when the survey launches April 30th, we'll be nice and ready um, to have a really big reach. So I just wanted to acknowledge their contributions as well as the support that Beth Williams and Liz Wells have been giving from an Our Kids Network perspective. So thanks for, for letting me do a quick little plug. Just wanted to shout them out as well. That was brilliant, Lily, and from what I've heard, and indeed from what I've seen, this project scope is simply insane, reaching the entire country and bringing together all kinds of different disciplines from research, communications, videography and the videos that you've been doing, and stakeholder relations. Uh, although they couldn't be seen tonight, surely the impact that their project has will be seen when that hard work, all of that is kind of put out there to the public and we begin to see the impact that that will have. Uh, I do miss all of our friends, but completely understand that they've already put in about an hour and a half today. So we certainly would not want to overwork anybody. We are all about that work-life balance in here. And it has been, again, kind of getting back to the, actually, before I get back into the wrap up, are there any questions, thoughts, or comments for our UNICEF team, whether it's for Lily or myself, or like for them to kind of take back? Amazing. So I guess that's another thing that I'll touch on, that work-life balance I've found to be so important with our team. And I've found that people kind of having time to kind of be themselves and to kind of enjoy their life has really resulted in people that when it does come time to work are, are kind of ready to just jump right into it, take a deep dive and uh, get things done as we have seen. So again, thank you all so, so much. It's been a great learning experience for me and hopefully for all of you as well. Uh, the work here that we've done, I will carry with me for the rest of my life, no doubt. And uh, I did tie my hair back for this occasion because it was a bit important. I didn't wanna be fussing with that constantly as I know some of you veterans may be familiar with. So again, thank you all so, so much for joining us with this. We will be following up in about one to two weeks to kind of see where all of that good progress is at. And there is one more thing, one more important thing, lots of important things, but one more thing that I'd like to mention. But before I do that, Lily, would you like to jump into your thank you and a little bit more about that follow up? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't sure I for, I wasn't sure if I was going to have a chance to, to chime in. So I started adding all my like excitement into the chat there. I just wanted to, um, you know, just say how exciting it's been to practice the service learning model. Uh, you know, shout out to the community partners who stepped forward to support our young leaders, providing opportunity statements and to really help close the loop on their projects. Looking forward to seeing how some people wrap up into April. Um, with those models and the relationships that were built. I think it really speaks to um, the strategy that Siobhan and I are employing for, for year three. So thank you each for that. And you guys are amazing. I'm seriously so intrigued by all the different ways that you tackled these projects. I wanna do an engaging Instagram story. I want to be part of the sustainability team for HII. Like you've really inspired me as well. And I, I feel like I've learned a lot um, from the different ways that you've approached these opportunities in the community. So thank you so much for that. Um, 
as for next steps, um, community partners, we are looking for you to provide a little feedback statement about your youth leaders. They are receiving a leadership letter of uh, recognition that includes, uh, it's on our Kids Network letterhead, and we want to make sure that your voice, opinion, logo, and signature are all part of that so the students really have a wonderful portfolio piece to walk away with. Um, students, if you could just make sure that any of the materials that you created for your community partners have been sent to them, are saved in your Google folder, uh, whatever it is, just make sure that it has been uh, sent so that community partner is able to access the documents after this. And I feel like I had one other thing I needed to say. Um... No, I, th I think that's it for now. Um, and just keep me in touch, keep in touch with me about any stories of continued connections that take place uh, throughout April, because I'd love to just be able to come along in those stories. And of course, happy to help if there's any hands on support needed. That was absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much, Lily, for jumping in. And I see a few people in the chat here that I was kind of trying to reply to. Uh, so I will do that here. Uh, as I depart from the Halton Youth Initiative, I use my Instagram very professionally, at Josh Detler, and I do try to follow people back, as was mentioned in an earlier presentation. If I forget, that's all it is. So please message me, and I will get right on that. So if you have any questions at all about any projects that you're working on, please feel free to fall back on me as a resource. And many of you already know how to reach Billy. Do you want to do a quick recap? Yeah, and just I, it, it did kind of remind me to to acknowledge that this is Josh's um, final contract with us as of right now. I'm still hoping to have him plug in from time to time. I know he wants to help with the Climate Crusaders event, but uh, what a wonderful year it's been having Josh on board as um, a, an expert for our environmentalism, um, to bring the Indigenous perspective to our uh, workplace and our volunteer space, and to be being seriously one of the best facilitators that I've ever worked with. Um, I definitely appreciate the, hi Kat, hi Dia, hi, hi Teresa. I know that I'm not alone in knowing that Josh knows how to make a really, really welcoming, positive, youth-friendly space online, you know, which is so tough and he, he's really nailed it. So I've just been so impressed with um, with all of your time and attention on our projects this year. So uh, you've made this virtual program just a little more spicy and a little bit more fun too. And uh, we'll miss you for that. That was so sweet. Look, I'm shining. That was really, really good to hear Lily. I suppose after about five or so years of working with you, it's no doubt that some of that talent rubbed off on me. And I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to share kind of what I have, both as an Indigenous person and just as uh, a citizen of Earth here, like everybody else. So thank you all so much. And like Lily mentioned, I will not be disappearing forever. Y'all have my Instagram. It's mainly what I use for work and communication. Although I do believe that my email is on the Google document that we've been using. So if you want to use a more conventional means, uh, feel free to do that. I see so many kind messages here in the chat. I'm going to screenshot that for rainy days. And uh, I, I really could not be happier with what I've seen out of each and every one of you young leaders. Our community partners have been tremendously receptive. It's been great to have you all a part of this. Uh, but our young leaders, you've, you've truly blown me away in terms of the, the content that you've been doing. Uh, I can't wait to see what you guys are doing at my age. I know that some of you are getting a little close to there. So it's just, it's going to be amazing to see that continue going on. And would you look at that? We ended a little bit early. So that is touching on that work-life balance. So you have my Instagram, you have my email address. I'm just gonna drop both of those in the chat again really quickly uh, so that if anybody has any questions about their project or just like anything that uh, you are working on or wanna connect about, uh, feel free to do that. And likewise, of course, for Lily, many of you already know how to reach out to her. So uh, yeah, I look forward to connecting with everybody. I look forward to checking in with Billy uh, to kind of see where these projects are at. And uh, I look forward to seeing where each and every one of you goes. It's been my absolute honor to take this journey with all of you.
from the bottom of my heart. I know it's cheesy. Stay with me. You only have to listen to this for like another minute tops. Thank you. I couldn't be more grateful. Uh, all of you are beautiful. All of you are blessed. And all of you are going to do great things. And I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. So with that, I'd like to wish everybody here a good night. And thank you, Lily, for helping me realize my potential. Take care, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all soon, however or whenever that may be. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs>